Hey folks, welcome to another Crafter Camper video. So we're going to take the engine out because we need access to this chassis leg, uh, we need a better look at it, see if it will straighten without the weight on it um, and if it doesn't then we'll assess it to see where we can cut it and fit a new member in. I uh, spoke to VW, the parts are available. We had a go at straightening the chassis um, with the engine in uh, by pulling it with a, with a pulley, um, it didn't go well. This is obviously a home job for taking out the engine, so I believe the correct procedure is to take it out from the bottom, drop it through, um, but as we haven't got a front end on here, uh, no bonnet etc, we're just going to lift it out. Bit of an easier job for me, obviously don't have the rad pack or the bumper or anything on this, so I don't need to drain any coolant, um, also don't need to degas any aircon or anything like that, so it's much easier for me. I'm going to jack it up, get some axle stands under it, uh, and start taking this engine out. So first of all, anything which is in the way has been removed, like the air box and the pipes. There's a few coolant pipes which were on the front, which originally connected to the to the rad pack, which we've removed just to get access. Uh, the AC lines are missing from the bottom. Uh, we've disconnected the battery, removed the fuel filter, and obviously all the coolant reservoir and relevant piping has gone as well from above this chassis leg. So first up, remove this engine ground, put the bolt back in so we know where it goes later. And we've disconnected these cables at the back of the engine, all those connections. There was also one in the back of the airbox which has also been removed. There's a mount under the scuttle which can be removed, placed on top of the engine. A couple of connections to remove from this fuse box. A lot of electrical connections to disconnect down here. I think there was four of them, including some sensors. There's also the hydraulic line which goes into the clutch. Also had to disconnect this cable from the ECU and the cabling for the gearbox here. Also disconnected the clamp around the exhaust pipe going down. There's also electrical connector down there, two coolant pipes and uh, a gas pipe as well which uh, has been removed from around that. Uh, you'll be able to spot them because they're, they're pretty easy to, uh, to spot. You, you can tell you, you can't remove the engine without disconnecting them. There's also a couple of heater pipes up here to disconnect as well um, and there was some fuel ho hoses here which you, you can see kind of hanging around. So just whiz through that, um, I'll put a detailed explanation in the second part of the video. I know some of you just like to watch it, see it being removed, have a look at it out. Um, so they're the quick steps for removing it. Um, but at the end, like I said, I, I've actually filmed every connection being disconnected, etc. Also remove both drive shafts from the gearbox, because obviously it wouldn't come out without those being removed too. Again, video later will show you in depth just drained any oil just to make sure it didn't weigh as much as it would with uh, I think it takes about seven liters of oil so it's quite a quite an extra bit of weight Folks, just forgot to record this bit, but the engine mount here at the top, just take those bolts out. Uh, the engine should now be free, uh, so we'll try and just double check any cables and then rock it out of here. That took a little while to figure out, and it's because there's this little mechanism across the bottom of the engine. It must be just to support it. Uh, I missed the bolt out of there, so it wouldn't come out. But as soon as that was out, everything came free. 
So now this is out, I can just give you a little bit more detail of why we did it. Um, that actually has an oil leak from underneath. Um, it seems like there's a little crack in the sump, so we'll have to get another sump for it. Um, there's various electrical connectors to fix. I thought with the rain in Yorkshire, it's probably better that we bring it in here, get everything sorted like these little clips. Uh, it gives it a little bit more time. We don't need to worry about the weather. So we'll probably pop all that in the next bit as well, just to show you all the repairs we do to the engine, put the other belts on. Um, obviously now it would have been easier to do the, uh, the timing belt whilst it was out here, but it doesn't really matter. Um, we got that done anyway. We can check for any other damage and I would paint it, but I can't be bothered to take all the hoses off. Uh -huh. So we'll probably just give it a clean up as well. Hey guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have, please like and subscribe. Uh, we'll try and get some more builds on the go as well eventually. Um, and obviously you can see us replace this chassis leg. Let's have a look in the next bit. We'll just take off a few of these front pipes so we've not got as much to deal with. So we'll just take off this engine ground here, it actually doesn't fit well with this cover at the minute so that'll, uh, that needed reseating anyway. Just where possible I'm replacing the bolts so I know where they went. Uh, rest of the bolts are going in a blue tub uh, all labelled up on the drawers. This one. To sleep. These are for the wings, bolts for the wheels, and you go. Just say one thing about my van, obviously the airbox is already out, um, but it's disconnected here, just to the left of the engine. Uh, and the next step is I'm going to disconnect these four electrical cables at the back. No need to label these because the cables are the length they need to be in. Um, these ones on the back side I will label up just to know which one's the, the black one. Um, for reference, I suppose I can watch this video again, 577 is on the bottom wire um, and on the top wire there doesn't seem to be any labelling. Right, those are unclipped, I've just took them over this uh, hose here. Next piece is this bracket under the scuttle trays. usual. Right, so he's off. He's in up here. I guess where it moves from. It's a bit of a tight clip. Just ended up removing that air pipe altogether from down there, uh, from the turbo, uh, because it was in the way. I'm just going to remove this tube as well, where it takes air into the cab, I'm removing the 10mm bolts at the top. Again, it's just for space because it's here above the engine. So, we just remove this cover, we need to take off these cables at this side. Um, obviously, just make sure the battery is removed at this point, you don't want any uh, shocks off this. Right, 
that's those off the clip to the body but uh, we'll start to remove some of those clips in a second we'll leave everything else in place now like the ECU etc uh, the next bit to mention for me is obviously I'm missing my uh, coolant reservoir and any connected hose in so if that was there on yours you need to remove it at this point just make sure any of the pipes which were connected to it which are kind of down here for me uh, basically come off uh, the coolant reservoir and stay attached to the engine. Next up, just going to remove these two hoses from the heating system. Uh, they're on little retainer clips, so you need to pull those out first with a screwdriver. One's at one side, one's at the other. should just pull off. So those two just disconnected. They do just pull off once you've got the clips in the right position. There's actually a little guide on them to pull it into. Right, and the last set of hoses I believe which need to come off are these from the top of the fuel filter. Just squeeze them in and pull them. A little bit messy. Uh, there's two of them on top. There you go, yeah, diesel going around, but uh, I'm just going to cover those up with a, a bit of glove or something just so nothing goes in them. So the next part is to push the little gear linkage off, so I'm going to push the pin on the back in, even though it's hooped, it's not a pull. You push it and then you pull up and that lifts out of the way. Next up is just a little retainer on this side of what's this and then we're just gonna pull this bracket out ever so slightly. Next bit's really really hard to see um, but there is a another push clip basically on that gearbox linkage which you need to push in and then you can pull off the linkage. So you see how they've moved out here. I put my hand in to the underside. It's actually on the front. It's quite awkward to do, but you push it in and you should be able to slide off that linkage. Now I've got it out, you might be able to see it a little bit better. Um, this basically slides this way and out. Uh, and down here is the linkage I've removed. Let's see if you can see the clip just on the back of that silver clip you have to push in, which retains it. Right, back to easy bit. 30mm socket just to get those that little bracket off. Uh, and then the gear linkages are free, so they're not still attached to the engine when we take it up. Right, just down here, there's a little vacuum line which we need to pull up the little silver clip and then release that. Uh, probably needs again covering with something just because there might be fluid in it. I want to give myself a little bit better access down here to get some more electrical clips off, so I'm just going to remove the fuel filter from the bracket. Uh, remove the wrong nut, but I'm going to remove this one down here, this one around the back as well, and then just lift that out with its bracket. Right, just a few electrical connectors to disconnect. There's this one from the fuel lines. Push those out of here. Uh, there is this one here. There is this one here going into the gearbox. And there's this main one here, quite a big one at the front. Removing the ECU, which is on the right hand side of the engine bay, I think from a safety point of view or a security perspective, these screws I think are, are basically snapped off so you can't get the ECU out. I guess that's for theft more than anything. Um, but basically I had to use the angle grinder, cut the heads off them uh, and then the, the actual bracket removed. Just disconnected the top piece, uh, the top wire going into that ECU. Just put it on the engine bay over there. That can come out with the engine. 
Right, from up in the engine bay perspective, just one little grey clip under the ECU wires to come off. Um, I think there may be a few diesel lines we need to disconnect and then a clip which is down behind the engine and that should be it. Uh, we do obviously need to disconnect the exhaust and uh, both drive shafts. For the exhaust there's just a couple of hoses there, an electrical connection and then on this side, which I'm not going to be able to show you, there is another hose as well. Um, and then on the top of the damp pipe there's a, um, a nut to release and then the clamp will come off so we can slide it out. We also need to detach the drive shaft from the gearbox so we'll take off the ball joint on the bottom we'll take out the retaining nut from the end of the drive shaft take off the caliper, remove the sensor from the back disconnect it from the uh, the leg here and probably loosen off the, the steering arm and then we'll be able to lift this out the way That's the drive shafts disconnected from the hub at both sides. Uh, it's a pretty sweaty job actually. Some of those bolts are well and truly on there. Um, what I need to do now is remove each one of the drive shafts from the actual gearbox. This is the driver's side. Same procedure to get everything off, except the actual drive shaft has two bolts in it this side. The easiest way to see it is actually down through here. Let's see if I can zoom in. See if that works. There you go. Um, what I'm going to do is reach down through the engine bay and use a pry bar to get that apart where the two bolts are. And two drive shafts removed. Obviously, this is the one which bolted in. This is the one that just slides out. Hey guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have, please like and subscribe. Uh, we'll try and get some more builds on the go as well eventually. Um, and obviously you can see us replace this chassis leg. Let's have a look in the next bit.